Today we've got a brand new video from Salmonella and I'm pretty sure this is his first video that he's dropped in two, three years, which is absolutely crazy. We've got where animal scientific names come from. This is a most recent Salmonella, so I'm excited for this one, man. Let's get straight into this one. Sam, where have you been, man? <sighs> Hey kids, I just woke up from a nap I took in January of 2020 and boy right. my arms tired. Let's see what I missed. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What? What is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. <laughs> Unprecedented global <laughs> Is pandemics. that the breaking news? Jam 2, some popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, we all know about the scientific names of animals, oh, nice. but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature we use to classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. Bro, what the fuck is this? Like, what what is this, first of all? Then what the hell is this, bro? What is this? And what... Aye, that, that looks so wrong. <laughs> First, you got the Sam, big what name, the domain, fuck? kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I've seen plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow right. me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. Donkey Kong's p <laughs> fucking g Serendipitously. The way this whole thing works differs slightly. <laughs> I love how Sam's like, you know what? I'm not bleeping out fucking like for <laughs> Depending on which kingdom you pick. That's allowed. So today we'll That's be sticking allowed. to the animal one because that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary. They basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, right. liger, zedonk, skunk ape. They can live fulfilling lives, but they're all shooting blank, so they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable Wait, trespasses what? against God, we can make things like Chidanedanes, which actually work so dogs are dogs are dogs besides species though it's the wild west in here plenty of times eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists so they just stick new sub levels in between legions cohorts tribes series divisions and if you want to keep going you can throw all kinds of prefixes on any of these for even more layers there's even subspecies which the more pedantic of you may think to yourselves that creating names for subspecies at all kind of under yeah but like do these sections already have names names and they just like tie a new species to it lines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree to that my friends taxonomists say uh -huh. but while that's so like for example if they find like a new bee that's tiny they'd be like my, my, micro bee <laughs> my my or, or, or if they can't figure out a name and they need something else like micro bee my, micro bee California. Pretty complex. The actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. Though taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin, the Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling it a leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. Multi-word names can be it's translated cool be the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila Chrysatos. Right, Gold the... eagle eagle. They decided to be a show-off and do eagle in Greek and Latin. Essentially the same though. But if a species is too specific eagle, or exotic gold, eagle. for a one-to-one -one translation, that's why Sick. you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and pointing out some cool-looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and uh... said, yup. Red triangle slug. I'm going on break. You call this thing a fucking unicorn. Wait, there's no way that's actually called that. And almost like that means one horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'ma call them head foot. And now biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of what? fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big Feet, slow feet. Do you know what? Why is it? Why is this actually catchy? <laughs> why is this? Four feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, ten thousand feet, cow's feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that interesting, another thing to point out is where you found why it. Is that this actually could be catchy? a territory like American bear or Siamese crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or toilet rat. But that's boring. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, uh. if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout, and there's no better way to go right. down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you. 
you found, but not all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock. Yeah, good job, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, l l let's uh, imagine if all elephants is just called Sam. <laughs> Over. On the one end, you got physicists just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing radiation measurement. And even then, only the top dogs got away with it. Now, zoology, any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say, This one has 13 spots, but the one in the books only got 11. I will call him Splinkus' ladybird. <laughs> Alternatively, plenty of biologists have given shout outs to their contemporaries, oh, both shit. other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists to explorers and more. Naturally, Darwin's got a shitload, but even the background characters get immortalized one way or another. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Hey, PDA? Grant! I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so they must name, be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was huh? found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, -a. the only similarity Wait, I can what gather the here fuck? is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. In 2007, one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Mermechia Fila Neil Youngy to honor his Who is that? musician, which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming of apostatist Stephen Colbert. Oh so, my that god. Gives any of you epic biologists out there. Any oh idea? man, I'm so annoyed that I don't have a spy. Actually, I don't even want a spider named after me. I, I, I don't even want that. I, I want something a little bit more like what I actually like. Yes, you know, something like I a scorpion. Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means immune to this phenomenon. Phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. Trump's wait, 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 this is legit, nine. isn't it? Bro, this is mad. Wait, I, I've touched, I, I've touched to <laughs> Barack Obama, <laughs> Obama done, gra bro, what the fuck? Paragordius Obama, Obama, Tosnoids Obama, oh my, W fish. Te Telegrammer of Bummerium Caliplaza of Bummy Barack Tremor of Bummy. What is that? What the hell is that? Ephistoma of Bummer Nystalus of Bummy. Yeah, I, yeah, I just butchered every single one of these names. You know what? You guys actually try and just pronounce those names. What the fuck is this? And what, what is that? Bro. What is this? As do a load of other presidents. Trump's got a moth with funny hair. Bush has a fungus <laughs> beetle. Reagan's a wasp. Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Bro, Even all Austria's these different most famous species, man. got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Mind you, it was 1933, so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, "Oh, thank you, my little entomolo mensch," and then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. Fun fact: Not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Guess all wow. that. Oh, fictional characters have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because- Oh my god, that is helmet, sick. This was actually named by the same guy who did the Bush <laughs> one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. Bro, that There's is sick. Might, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck cover with hair and his lips clench into a pog and his endocrine system filled with Soy, and he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him. The dino <laughs> genus is now Sauroniops from Eye of Sauron. This spider was named after Godric Gryffindor because it looks like the sorting hat. SpongeBob has not a sponge, but a fungus. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own, you guessed it, beetle. And the list goes on. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. Wait, that's yeah. actually anyway, while this mad. Anyway, kind of chaotic, there is some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's one. Red panda? Nah. Shining cat. Coined in 1825. <laughs> to be fair, they're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so 
so whatever. Wait, wait, is the actual name for that red panda shiny fucking cat? Here's oh my two. god. Capsicum chinense. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe, where literally all hot peppers came from. This principle holds true even if someone thinks they found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Equus burchellii, or Birchell's horse, named after a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 1785, some other douche classified this character as the quagga. The last oh quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. So, why do we care? Well, in the 2000s, scientists decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that, they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically, they're one species. And today, they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, oh, but then my again, so God. Asinous, and that worked out fine. Just to maintain the distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. This double naming convention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wild wild horse, spotted spotted panther, or my favorite, gorilla gorilla gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's the gorilla. Bro, what the fuck am I seeing gorilla, right now with gorilla. these names? What you want from me? A closely related rule also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally name any taxa on the same thing, the older one gets to stay and the new one gets the boot. Like if you saw a genus called echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? Well, no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in You know what? It's actually gonna get like a lot more confusing in like a hundred more years. They they're gonna literally run out of names. It's gonna be the weirdest names on the well, they already are the weirdest names on the planet, but it's gonna be even more weirder. 1788. So the real echidna had to be changed to Tachaglossus or quick tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed. People discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to Bitis because they Bitis. That one at least made a bit of sense, given that the original echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake. Okay. But who cares at this point? Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there. So yeah, that's a lot down below that's all i've got for now till next time i'm sam Manella, and i'll see you in 2025 <laughs> you know what he's not even joking either but really good video hope you get another sam Manella a bit sooner than 2025 hopefully you guys did enjoy if you did make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe if you guys got any videos you want me to react to leave them down in the comment section below and i'll see you all in the next video